Manil Kumar sharing with you questions from my subscribers. Let me thank all of you for participating actively and posting such great questions. My request is that since we see questions from across the continents, it will be good practice that you also mention the country of your origin so that I get more insight to your question. Here we have two questions based on thirds. We also call them square roots. So we have two equations from a subscriber. Let us see how to solve them. First one is square root of 5x square plus 20 plus 6 equals to x square. And second one is square root x minus 2 divided by square root x minus 4 equals to square root x minus 6 divided by square root x minus 7. Now both these questions are very different as far as the solution is concerned. So let me take them one by one. I'll start with the second one first, which is square root x minus 2 over square root x minus 4 equals to square root x minus 6 over square root x minus 7. Now see, if I make a substitution, that is, let's substitute square root x as, let us say p, right? Let us say p. In that case, what happens? The equation becomes p minus 2 over p minus 4 equals to p minus 6 over p minus 7. So it gets transformed to a rational equation. Do you see that? Which is much simpler to solve than the previous one, right? Now, another important thing which we should also look into these equations is always uh, restrictions. Now, these are general things which I'm talking about, which may help you. Uh, so, in this particular case, x has to be greater than 0 because of square root x. And also, denominator cannot be 0. So, so x is not equal to 16 and also not equal to 49. So, these cannot be part of your solution. Right? Okay. Now, this is a rational equation. Let's solve it. Since it is an equation, we can cross multiply. So let's cross multiply at this stage. And then solve. So what we get here is p minus 2 times p minus 7 equals to p minus 6 times p minus 4, right? So that's the quadratic equation. Let's expand. So we get p squared minus 9p, right, when you add these two, plus 14 equals 2. On the right side, we get p squared minus 10. Uh, I should write 10p. And this, when you multiply, you get plus 24. You, I have skipped one step. You could do distributive property and then get to this. Now let's bring all the terms to one side. So in that case, you will find that uh, p square and p square will cancel. So when you bring this on the left side, we get 10p minus 9p. Uh, now it's kind of a linear equation. So let me take this 14 on the right side. We get 24 minus 14. And that is p equals to 10. So we get our solution p equals to 10. Now it is within the domain of the function, right? So therefore, we can say our answer is equal to what? Now p is square root of x. Let's think about it before writing the answer. Now we made a substitution here, which is square root x equals to p, right? So, so we know square root x equals to p, and that is equal to 10. Is it okay? That's what we got. So to get the value of x, we'll square both sides. So we get x equals to 100. So square both sides. All 
right so x equals to 100 becomes the solution of this particular question now what you should also do is you should check your solution right so you could always check if I substitute square root x as 10 I get 10 minus 2 over 10 minus 4 which is 8 over 6 and if I do 10 minus 6 over 10 minus 7 I get 4 over 3 now 8 over 6 is 4 over 3 so that means it is correct here that is the left side and this is the right side both are equal so in any equations or inequalities where we are dealing with thirds or square roots we should check our solution right so i think this part is very clear now let's take up the the first question which is kind of tricky now in this particular case uh, you will notice that x can be the domain is that x belongs to real numbers since this is square it will always be positive right so that becomes the domain for the function now to solve such equations we should rewrite so i'll rewrite this as 5x squared plus 20 and we'll take 6 on the other side so we get x squared minus 6. now we can square both sides So if you square both sides, what I'm trying to say is square both sides. This is what I'm trying to say. Is it okay? You definitely incorporate some errors. But however, here the domain is all real numbers, so we are kind of safe. So when you square a square root term, we'll get 5x squared plus 20 here. And on the right side, we can expand it. Right? We could expand using the formula a plus b or minus b whole square is a square plus or minus 2ab plus b square so what we get here is x to the power of 4 minus 2ab means 12x square plus 6 square which is 36 right since you are preparing for O level I think these steps are easy for you to grasp okay so here, what you notice is we have degree 4. So in this particular case, I could make a substitution. So let me substitute this time. Uh, what? x square as some number, let's say n, right? So we are substituting x square equals to n. Then what happens? Then we get 5n plus 20 equals to n square minus 12 n plus 36 so what you get here is a quadratic equation which we can easily solve right so let's bring all these terms to the right side because 0 equals to n square minus 12 n minus 5 n plus 36 minus 20 and that gives me n square minus 17 n and that is 16 right okay now we can always factor this uh, 16 yeah 17 times 1 uh, will give us I mean 16 times 1 will give us 16 and if both are negative then we get minus 17 right so that's what we get now the solution of this is you know n equals to 16 or n equals to 1 so from here we can say n equals to 16 or n equals to 1. These are the two possible values. Now let's take care of our substitution. So when we say uh, n, we mean x square, right? So x square equals to 16 is one solution. The other one is n is x square, x square equals to 1. So what is x equals to? So when you square root, don't forget to write plus and minus you may skip this and lose half marks and here x is equals to plus minus square root of 1 this gives you two values plus minus 4 this also gives you two values plus minus 1 and so what you get here as your solution is x is equals to plus minus 1 and plus minus 4 
So you are getting two solutions for this particular equation. What you should do is, well, I'll leave it here. That's my answer. I would like you to please check. for extraneous roots right so at times you may get extraneous root but I okay i hope you have checked your answer so once you check your answer what do you get well you'll notice that for x equals to plus minus four if we check the equation works out right so if we check for x equals to plus minus four we really get square root of 5 times, I could write x squared as 16, right? So 5 times 16 plus 20 plus 6, which is square root of 100 plus 6, right? Which is 10 plus 6 as 16. And x squared on the right side is 16, so it works out. However, if you write x equals to plus minus 1, then what happens? Then you get 5 times 1, which is 5, plus 20, plus 6. In that case, you get 5 plus 6, which is 11. Do you see that? But the right side x square is plus minus, or I should say well, when you square it is always 1, right? So, which is not equal to 1. So what you notice here is that this particular solution does not work out. So this is an extraneous solution. Is it okay? So once you check, you find that the true answer, let me write down here. Is x equals to plus minus so the true answer is actually x equals to plus minus 4 and the extraneous roots are at x equals to plus minus 1. Do you see that? So it is very important in spite of the fact that we don't have any restrictions, right? we do get extraneous roots and that is very important to understand. When you are working with certs or square root equations or inequalities right so i hope this point is absolutely clear feel free to make your suggestions and uh, i really appreciate your views thanks for watching if you like and subscribe my videos that'd be great thank you and all the best